so we're back for part two of our Desperate Measures video. Uh, as before, I'm joined with Mike Hott, the author of Desperate Measures, and this time we're going to talk about the German forces in the book. So, uh, Mike, you want to give us just a quick overview? Kind of what, what do the German forces in Desperate Measures represent? These are the last of the Panzer battles mm. So, the, on the Eastern Front. So there's quite a lot of variety, um, mm. quality issues, um, but all this is... Uh, Good for the Flames of War player because it gets right. quite a quite a range of of uh, forces that suit people's different play styles. And right. Things. Whereas so, in reality, you were using whatever you could find, mm -hmm. literally anything you could dig out of a ditch and get fighting again. Yep. Whereas we have the uh, the option to really pick and choose and, and kind of yeah. yeah. list tinker our lists. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So so the, the Germans in this book are uh, focus a lot on that. Uh, there was a lot of tank battles that sometimes get lost in history. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that. This period, this first couple of months of, of 1945, are, right. are quite defensive. There's lines of infantry trying to hold off the Soviets and things like that. But there's actually quite a few armored counterattacks happening. German armored counterattacks were being ordered almost on a daily basis. Right. You have Operation Solstice, which covers a lot of the Panzer battles up in Prussia, mm -hmm. coming down, trying to cut off the Soviet advance, oh, right. coming towards Germany so or Berlin. So there's a lot of these. Panzer battles happening, and a lot of it, a lot of the best troops are on the Eastern Front. So you've got a lot of mm. old veterans, things like Grossdeutschland, and and some right. of those divisions that are still fighting. So this, so this book, all the Panzer divisions, kind of represent all of those guys as kind of a conglomeration. Right. So you have the option to either field very historical lists based on mm. I think you were saying earlier, kind of these mashups of units. Yep. Uh, or you can basically make a theoretical right. Panzerkampf group. And, right. Yeah. yeah, and take a full strength, you know. Panther Company, even though it probably was right. never really full strength, <laughs> right. but uh, you have the option of uh, right. doing yeah. ah, Very cool. Yep. Uh, okay, so I guess we're going to talk a little bit about the reorganizations of 1945. Mm -hmm. I think you were mentioning they were simplified earlier, so tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Yeah, one of, the, one of the biggest issues that faced the German army in 1945 was just lack of experience. A lot of guys teaching the, 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 their Panzer students and things like that were they might have had some experience on the Eastern Front, but anyone who's had some significant amount of Eastern Front experience or bat combat experience in general and weren't wounded uh, were back on the Eastern um, on the lines. Mm -hmm. So they were fighting. So they a lot of the new officers and things that were being churned out by these schools were actually brand new guys who had very little experience. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had to kind of deal with that. And the solution was to simplify the Panzer troop and arm, the branch. And for the Panzers, that meant smaller platoons. Right. Um, they uh, had four tanks per platoon as opposed to five. All right. uh, a lot of the weapons platoons disappear, so you don't, get, you don't have a lot of like those, the scouts and the, and the pioneers and stuff like that, because that's right. coming in from a divisional level. Oh, so you've, gotcha. got your, uh, you've got, for like the Panzer Grenadiers, it, it, it involves for taking away complicated to use platoons, like heavy platoons, mortar mm. platoons, infantry gun platoons, uh, pioneer platoons, anti-tank gun platoons, turning those into much easier to use platoons, which we'll right. see later. Um, so it's a lot of simplification. Mm. And what that means for the Flames War player is you may have fewer options in your company diagram, right. but those options that you do have have a tremendous amount of firepower because that's how it was compensated. Right. So you've got some vehicles that are can put out a lot of firepower uh, and um, and deal with the enemy that way, right. as opposed to trying to get clever with combined arms operations. Right, makes sense. And so you mentioned four to, uh, four tank platoons rather than five, and I think uh, it's interesting to know uh, to remind everybody that these Panzer Kampf groups are already Kampf groups, so you kind of mm. can't pull guys out and make new platoons. So right, you're, exactly. You're already yeah. at that point with yeah. these lists. If you look at any of the German lists and Desperate Measures, you'll find that they're called Kampf groups as opposed to companies. Mm -hmm. So whereas in like Greywolf, for example, you'll find a Panzer company. Right. In this book you'll find a Panzer Kampf group. Right. Because effectively what's happened is the Kampf groups are being made for you. Mm -hmm. As as the commander of your Flames of War Force, you've been given a Kampf group. As opposed to like in Grey Wolf days, uh, you're allowed to kinda make your own Kampf group with the stuff that you've got. Right. It's part of that simplification process. It's your regimental commander's already sorted that out for you. Here you go. <laughs> this is the unit that you're right. taking into battle. And okay. so in a, in a way, with Desperate Measures, you're, you're kind of, you're playing both the regimental commander and the company commander. Gotcha. So right. you're kind of organizing your task group yep. and then uh, actually 
playing it. Right, makes a lot of sense. Um, and also, uh, just to go back to the smaller platoon sizes, now with the Joy of the War, mm -hmm. it's actually pretty attractive to take a three-tank platoon. You know, historically in Flames right. War, it's kind of best right. to go for even numbers, but yep. Joy of the War has kind of turned that on its head. Exactly. So you can build a lot of those kind of unusual comp groups and stuff like that and actually get away with it in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. As opposed to being um, uh, wanting to inflict a bit of punishment on yourself, right. uh, you can actually say, you know what, actually these are durable. Because with three tanks, enjoy the war for those who may not know. Uh, when it comes to taking a platoon morale, right. you test each tank as opposed to a yep. little platoon. So each tank has make their and the crew make their own decision. And we want right. to stick around or bottle out. So, exactly. And it's um, on a three or three or better. Yeah, so, so it's actually yeah. they, they almost become fearless yeah. in that regard. Yeah. It's important to note that it, that, that that they don't become fearless. Right. You know, not so at all. There could be some confusion with some people. Yep. Thinking Correct. that maybe they become fearless. Uh, it's just it's a, it's a one time check. It's on a three up period. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. They don't become fearless. Yeah. But yeah. in like a three tank platoon, mm -hmm. if you lose two, then that other one's checking on a three up. So he's mm -hmm. not fearless, but he's right. almost fearless. Almost fearless, right? Yeah. So he's not going to do any, anything stupid. Right. <laughs> but, right. <laughs> but he'll he'll stick around and and and, and try to defend the right. Line, right. Okay. So uh, who exactly do the Panzer Kampf groups represent? I mean, you've talked about how you're kind of the uh, the regimental commander and then the company commander, but who are these guys? You know, representing historically, they're representing every Panzer company, <laughs> everything that's left, everything that's left. Right. Uh, we tried to make sure that the the options and, and the variety is quite open in right. this book, uh, because it's there is quite a lot of variety in the German mm -hmm. uh, Panzer groups at this point. You've got guys that are quite uh, coming from an old, experienced division, like say, I used this example earlier, Gross Deutschland. Right. They've been fighting since the beginning. Right. And they may or may not have had some organization changes and things like that, depending on the unit. Uh, they may not have received some equipment, or they've got older equipment. Um, so you can field those guys using that, or you can field some of these brand new units that right. are coming in. And some of these new units are really fresh uh, guys that are coming in. So that's where you get the two varieties in the, in the book, competent veteran, which are your old hands, and mm -hmm. your um, competent trained guys, which are your uh, brand new guys. And right. I've had some questions asked people, why not reluctant uh, at this point in the war? That's very, very true for Western Front, um, facing the Western Front, facing the Americans right. and the British. Guys, were they did make a lot closer decision. In the East, they were quite battle-weary, mm -hmm. but they weren't, they, they don't, Quite tip force right. under that reluctant. They rating. weren't quite ready to give right. up. So, so between their confident rating and enjoy the war, they're much more likely to stand up against um, their their opponent, which is the Soviets, mm. uh, than say maybe their East or Western Front comrades. Right, makes sense. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the the options. There's a million tank options practically. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, so tell me a little bit about you know the Hetzers, the Panzer IVs, and, and mm -hmm. kind of roughly where these units are kind of being pulled from and mm -hmm. or stolen from, I guess. Yeah, yeah. There's some interesting organizations. One of the one of the myths about this period of the war is that these guys are going in with mixed Panzer platoons. They're, right. You know, they're throwing together five tanks of various types. Right. Something like the Scrapyard platoon for the Americans. Right. Yeah. Uh, at this point, that's not exactly true. A lot of the units are still going in with very the similar types of equipment. Mm -hmm. So if they have been issued, uh, 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 Panzer Division has been issued Panthers and Panzer four seven or Panzer four Js, which mm -hmm. is common at this point. Right. Uh, most units will, that's the standard Panzer Abteil long had um, Panthers and Panzer four Js. Mm -hmm. um, whereas some didn't, they would have they'd be um, in place of their Panthers. They'd get Jagdpans. Panthers, right. and in place of their Panzer IV Js, they'd get Panzer IV 70s. Right. So they're still Panzer Company, but they, they go in as a um, with slightly different equipment. Right. So rather than equipment that's traditionally saved for tank hunter units, right. they're yeah. now just being issued yeah. to the Panzer Company. So you're getting this hodgepodge of just a little bit of everything, yeah. kind of, yeah. but they're still fielded sort of as a unit, because you get, mm -hmm. say, all of them. Mm -hmm. You get 15 of something rather than right. one or two that you try to intermingle. Right. Now, having said that, it's completely plausible that a lot of the Panzer, panzer Kampf groups that are fighting on the Eastern Front mm -hmm. uh, are, are uh, basically elements of two different units. Mm -hmm. So, if, say for example, a Panzer Abteilung gets mixed up with a Panzer Jaeger Abteilung. Right. And a Panzer Jaeger Abteilung is going to be bringing to the mix things like Hetzers, uh, Jagdpan Jagdpanthers, uh, Panzer IV 70s, and those kinds of weapons. Right. Um, and they get mixed up with. Panther or a Panzer company with maybe pan Panthers, Panzer IVs, more traditional things that you would see like in Grey Wolf. Right. Um, 
So you might get you might get a comp group that that would appear where it's got portions of both of these elements. So what you could do in the right. book is you can have a combat platoon of panthers and a support platoon, or in your second combat platoon is hetzers, right. representing the fact that this is actually two completely distinct abtilongs that have been mashed together and sent in. Right. So that's kind of the idea of, of right now there is quite a variety in your equipment, but it's kind of sorted for you on the battalion mm. uh, kind of... It's level. almost like the logistics are handled by still keeping them together. Yeah. There's still relatively well organized. Mm. Moving forward, however, certainly there is a lot more of that, that, that myth becomes a lot more reality. Yeah. When you start getting closer to Berlin or you're going through the Ruhr or something like that, right. uh, you see a lot more mixed platoons where there's like a Panther, a Panzer IV, or a Hetzer, and a, I don't know, a Hornet. So yeah, like just that. anything yeah. that's running. Yeah. 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 yeah, Cool. So let's talk a little bit about the tank escorts. This is the first time that they've really been widely available for the German forces. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about the history of that. Yeah, the tank escorts were, they were established, I think their first use was in Kursk, mm -hmm. and with the, uh, with the uh, 78th Division at the time. Oh, cool. um, that was a quite a successful experiment, and uh, the 78th Sturm Division, which, mm -hmm. uh, which you can find in uh, Grey Wolf, right. was the first to employ it quite standard with their mm -hmm. Stugs. Right. And then that practice started trickling through the German army a little bit, right. to the point where new units were being raised with the Beglock Company. Right. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of the brand new units were showing up to the front with the Beglock Company yeah. attached to their Panthers. And just to differentiate yeah. for people, these were guys who actually trained with the tanks mm. and sort of were, were basically, for all intents and purposes, a part of the crew. Yeah. Right. They were expected yeah. to say not just some dudes that they grabbed off the side of the road. Yeah. Yet, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And so they're, they're, these guys, their job is to protect their tank. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we, we, we've introduced the uh, glides. Mm -hmm. we, we've widened that up for all the tanks to start taking them in right. the Panzer Company. The, uh, however, the older guys, they, they saw this happening and they knew what, what happened when tanks got in close with enemy infantry. They knew mm -hmm. that there you know, could be serious issues. Right. And what they started doing is they started creating ad hoc tank riders and escorts and things like that. And right. So what, what older crews did is they would pick up remnant units. So they see mm -hmm. like four guys kind of milling around. They'd say, what happened to your company? Where is your company? And they'll reply, we are the company. I was <laughs> like, well, all right, come with us. You know, right. and protect this tank and, and, and we'll see this thing out together. Right. Uh, so a lot of those older, older units are still picking up uh, fractured and remnants and stuff like that, integrating them into their Panzer companies to become de facto the Glide. Gotcha. Riders Very cool. So, yeah, so that, that's the origin of a lot of the ones for the Panzer companies. Right. How hard was it to play test uh, this Panzer Comp group that's just totally open-ended and mm. you can take, you know, so many different combinations of things? Yeah, it was an interesting experience. There's quite a lot of, a lot of Optimi optimizing, mm -hmm. so people were always trying to you know, find their best a little bit of the theory hammer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah got really, got really in depth. But overall, it turned out all right. Mm -hmm. um, the reception was was quite well because yeah. it, it gave the Germans some flexibility, which up to this point they didn't quite have. Yeah, uh, and that was basically uh, more to do with organization and, and equipment issue. But with this one, we realized that this is the first step towards Berlin, which means right. the Germans are going to start collapsing in on themselves. And for the Flames of War player, that actually is a good thing yeah. because you're going to get more and more equipment kind of compressed into a smaller pocket. Right. As, as, a, right. as a small unit, um, you've got, you'll have some options available to you. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, so we've talked a lot about the tanks. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, the Panzer Grenadiers are a really cool, really cool force. One of the interesting things about armored Panzer Grenadiers is that their half tracks never were in a short supply. So they, they were always had a good amount of half tracks to run around with. Plus, they had to keep up with the tanks. Their biggest issue, of course, was fuel, but that's right. you know, outside the game. <laughs> um, so the idea of, of kind of mobile firepower, uh, they're, they're starting to get things uh, like uh, armored or assault rifles, mm. yeah. uh, Panzerfausts, and things like right. that. So you're kind of getting quite a, a large amount of firepower within the platoon themselves. Their command vehicles are becoming are more typically armed with the yeah, triple flag and the and the and two centimeters, mm -hmm. and so they've got a really good anti-tank or anti-aircraft uh, um, element plus a, a large amount of firepower they can deal with uh, enemy uh, right. infantry and stuff like that. So, well, there's a lot of firepower built straight into the platoons themselves at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, part of the reorganization effort was to consolidate a lot of the heavy weapons uh, 
the tasks of all of the heavy weapons. That huge list, if you look at a Panzer Grenadier company in, in Grey Wolf or mm. Atlantic Wall, there's a huge list of weapons platoons. Mm. Um, part of that simplification was to take all that and condense it into a simple, easy-to-use weapons mm. platoon for the company commander, or right. battalion commander. Right. And so that included, in this, in this iteration, it's the Pac-40 mm. 251s, uh, they they fulfill the role of an infantry gun. They fulfill right. the role of a of a anti tank anti-tank gun. Anti guns, yep. and um, that's a good meaty unit. So if you do need to right. like actually help, you know, support an assault or something like that, they can right. they can deal with that. Um, so you get a lot of that extra added firepower directly into into the into the comp groups. So the Panzer Grenadiers they lo- they lose quite a bit in their company diagram. But it all comes back in some significant amount of firepower. Right. Easy to use uh, and large, high quant quality and quantity um, sure. firepower. I know. I'm super excited about the six pack 40 half tracks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then you, the, the, the list also covers the older guys as well. So mm-hmm. you can see you've got the option of if you don't want to take assault rifles, you can still stick with the old machine guns. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, you know, they've got their own uh, varieties and right. styles of play that way as well. Right. Very cool. So uh, I may as well move on to the next German list. The, 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 there's two Ausbildungs lists in there, right? That's right. Yeah, right about yep. that. Yeah, you want to tell us a little bit about kind of what those represented and how they came to be in Flames of War? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Ausbildungs units are a, uh, they're based on schools. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of armored schools um, in, all throughout Germany, and uh, where they would, they would turn out a lot of crews and things for specific battalions and things right. like that. So, for example, the um, Panzer Ausbildung's uh, Abteilung 500 was responsible for turning out heavy tank crews. Right. And so uh, that's one of the options in the book, uh, is to take a um, heavy tank crew uh, school, uh, which had a couple of the, the old Tiger II mm. Porsche versions kicking around, as well as right. some old Tiger ones. They're also the unit that supply Comp Group Hummel, with all of huh. its uh, uh, run-down Tiger ones that went into right. Arnhem, uh, they also appear in um, in uh, a few places like in Aiken as well. Oh, cool! So they've they've given out quite a few of their heavy tanks to people. But at this point, mm. now they're fighting on their they they literally fought on their school grounds mm. and um, had and and protected them and, and, and were destroyed there. So wow. so they've got quite a large uh, amount of. Of old tanks so, uh, for some of the older um, Ausbildungs units. Right. So other ones like at Bergen and things like that. Each school had its own kind of like specialty. So you oh, might okay. one might be like a tank hunter school, one might be a, gotcha. um, a panzer school and things. So the tank hunter school would churn out like Hetzer units right, um, right. Or, and, and things like that. Whereas the other ones would churn out panzer units which would be equipped with anything from a panzer 2 to a mm. to a panzer 3s, 4s, and mm. panthers. So. Right. And uh, I think you were telling an interesting story about those brum bars that are available. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's one of the schools uh, have have three brum bars a, associated with it in the room. From what we can gather, that was from a unit that was was re, it was on its way re, to reinforce one of the Sturm Panzer of mm-hmm. and and it was sent three from the factory, and they were intercepted by this unit because the the uh, allies were right right there, <laughs> and uh, integrated into the Panzer Ausbildungs Battalion. But, uh, so they basically said, "Yeah, I'm just going to steal those from yeah, yeah, mine yeah. now." Yeah, it would have been it would have been silly for them to continue anyway to their old unit because they would have been yeah. cut off and destroyed and stuff. So right. it made sense for them to, to integrate them at the time. Right. A lot of these house buildings units are are that they're so um, ad hoc. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually quite difficult to see what historically what what they had mm-hmm. and and actually what their fate was. That was one of the interesting things. Is a lot of them mm-hmm. they just kind of get wrapped up in history and, and some of them fight on all the way through Berlin. There was one that got swept up into the Berlin defense. And wow. There's others that um, fought and died on the schoolyard. So mm. it's, it's, yeah, they're really cool and interesting units. So the lists themselves were designed to let you either field those historical units. Right, which you gave some handy little guides in the book for kind of yeah. what they actually had. Yeah, there's, like, there's about a half dozen schools that I've noted mm. and, um, and have kind of given you some equipment guidelines. So right. what, what, what equipment that those guys had. So if you want to, you can use those to help you know, frame your um, your force. Or you can uh, create your own school and uh, bring, them, bring them what you'd like. Right. Yeah, very cool. Uh, well, we talked a little bit about some of the new units available to the Germans. Um, anything, any other anecdotes or something you can talk about? Maybe some of the Pac-40 half-tracks or the crazy little Pac-40 that's on the <laughs> 
Oh, is it the 234 chassis? That's right. Oh, I yep. can't I get all those numbers <laughs> mixed up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah there's, they've got a lot of cool new toys that are starting to come out for this period in the war. Mm -hmm. So you've got the, uh, like we mentioned earlier, the, the Pac-40 uh, SDK FC-251. Yep. The 234s are an excellent chassis. Yeah. Uh, they proved themselves quite well in Normandy when, with like a Puma and the... Right. Um, in the two centimeter armed version, mm -hmm. so the Germans uh, put uh, a Pac 40 on there, uh, right? And it became quite a you know, deadly uh, little mm -hmm. vehicle. So, um, so yeah, compare that up with the little two centimeter version, and they run around and and, uh, and help support your, right. your Panzer troops. That's a cool little unit, it is. Yep, yep, definitely. The other kind of, some other cool kit that the Germans get in the book the um, the Boita Panzers, they they mm -hmm. you know, not yes. gonna, you're not going to leave a tank unused, right. <laughs> so. So if you happen to catch a uh, T-34 or something like that, and uh, yeah. then and put it into operation. I always love captured Panzers, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. So you can get T-34s, T-34, 76s, and 85s. Um, there's a, there's an SU-100. There's an SU-100. Yeah, captured SU-100. Yeah, the 4th fourth fourth Panzer Division, uh, yeah. NAP-1. <laughs> and, the, uh, and there's a couple that have uh, SU-85s and things. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those all those are included to to help uh, people. Very cool. Uh, let's talk about my homeboy, Rudel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about yeah. Rudel. Yeah, that guy. He's cool. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, his uh, his his biography is a is a really good read. His autobiography is a really good read if you get a chance to read it. Uh, Stuka Ace is what that's called. Mm. Um, yeah, we we thought that this would be a good opportunity to bring him in. Uh, he's he's an interesting guy because he mm. he really tried very hard in the early war period to get involved and hmm. Germans kept trying to saying no 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 you can't you can't fly you can't fly so finally when he did start flying on the eastern front he quickly racked up a massive um, hmm. uh, kill tally including a battleship um, wow. <laughs> and uh, he, he was yeah he became something of legend uh, he to the extent that they had to start inventing devices to put on his uh, Knight's Cross because he had won everything that they that, nice. that they so they had to start turning things gold and <laughs> calling it that. So, wow. so um, yeah. So we wanted to. We thought this was a good opportunity to bring him in because there were a couple stories mm -hmm. that um, anecdotal stories from grenadiers and Panzer grenadiers and Panzer companies, right. Panzer uh, crews, saying that oh they were at the they were you know, up against the ropes they were just about to be defeated and all of a sudden a Stuka came in blew up a whole bunch of Soviet tanks mm -hmm. and they were saved and cool. almost. Every single one of them claims that it was Rudel. It's probably mm. not that real. Right, kind of like how every yeah. tank in Normandy was a Tiger, but yeah. Exactly, yeah. But we wanted to recreate that somehow. Yeah. There was, you know, you're up against it, and and there's a, a Stuka shows up. Now, you, as a front soldat, you probably haven't seen a, um, a, a friendly <laughs> aircraft in quite some time. <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's showing up and saving the day will make right. an impression on you, and we wanted to make sure that that was kind of... So Rudel, he is himself, and the histories are there and things like that, but it's also the, the occasional time the Luftwaffe does show up and, yeah, right. and, and support him, and, and creates a huge, uh, yes, we've survived this horrible, <laughs> horrible battle, we were all about to die, and right. he came in and, 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 and fixed it. Ooh. So we wanted to make sure that uh, he came in at this point, because... Uh, his ex exploits are pretty pretty amazing throughout mid and early uh, mm -hmm. late war. However, uh, in, at this point, he was a um, he was a, a source of inspiration and mm -hmm. um, a bit larger than life. Yeah, 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 he was a hero for these guys. Yeah, and we wanted to include him there. So we, we right. invented a a new type of warrior, the aircraft warrior. <laughs> <laughs> for all intents and purposes, a, a plane sniper. Yeah, and he'll come yep. in, he'll nail two tanks, and fly off. Right. Very really cool. A lot of new options for the Germans. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. I find myself list noodling out of desperate measures all the time because there's <laughs> so many different combinations you can come up with. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, anyone's play style. Yeah. And painting and modeling options. Mm. By that point in the war, just about anything goes, eh? That's my favorite aspect of this book. Yeah. Um, thinking about how to actually make your army look distinct from ones mm. from like from 1944. This is a very good opportunity to right. to send your tanks into battle in red oxide primer, yeah. or or as a green base coat right. instead of your uh, dunkel gel. So and also just make them look really beat up. You can yep. a lot of replacement parts and stuff. It's yeah. a ton of fun. Yeah. yeah. So it, we we did a really good um, 
uh, we had our little uh, our staff painting thing, yeah. building Nails that Builders really 500. Fun. So keep an eye out on the website for that because that that'll give you some really good ideas mm. for for modeling your very late war uh, Soviet Panzers. Right. Cool. Well, any closing thoughts? Have you gotten to play many games with Germans from uh, Desperate Measures? Yeah, I played a lot of games with the Germans. I really enjoyed the Panzer Grenadiers. Mm. That was my my personal um, my personal favorite. Uh, they just kind of you treat them as like light tanks, oh, uh, right. guys mounted up in light tanks, and they can go around okay. doing stuff. And then, and then you've got your uh, Panzer fours with uh, tank escorts, which I think is nice. They're so, a really good assault force. That's a very the good gun. and the machine guns and the yeah. escort makes them really quite good at that. Yep, yep. So cool. you can kind of if you if you pick your battles and you're smart with them, then yeah. then they'll they'll bring it home for you still. The Panzer four. Yeah, I you do love end. Panzer four. I'm all about the veteran Hetzer though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, thanks for sitting down yeah. for a little bit and talking with mm -hmm. us about Desperate measures. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, let us know in the comments section and we'll keep them coming.